So what is the McLeod judgment? So if you are a public sector worker and you are enrolled in your workplace pension, chances are you have heard of the McLeod judgment. But what is it and how does it affect you? That's what we're here to talk about. I'm Kozlan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. So to understand what the McLeod judgment is, we do need to establish who this affects and what things look like before the change. So starting with who it affects. If you are an individual who is a public sector worker, so some examples would be if you are someone that is working for the NHS, you're a teacher, you work for the civil service, police, firefighters and armed forces, etc, etc. And you were enrolled in your workplace pension from the 1st of April 2012, and on the 1st of April 2015, you will be affected. Now let's look at what your workplace pension would have looked like if you were a public sector employee during these times. So up until the reforms, which I'll touch on in a moment, public sector pensions were a rare kind of pension. And that is that you were given a final salary pension when you hit retirement. This is also known as a defined benefits pension. Now this type of pension used to be all the range a few decades ago. However, nowadays, outside of the public sector, they are actually a rare find. Most private sector companies have moved to what is known as a defined contribution pensions instead, as these were found to be more cost effective to the business. But for those on a defined benefits pension, this essentially meant that once you did hit retirement age, your pension would give you a retirement salary for life. And usually this retirement salary was based on how many years of service you accrued and the best salary you achieved towards the run-up of your retirement. In contrast, this is very different to the more common defined contribution scheme, where you and your employer contribute X amount of money into a specific pot, and then this pot is then invested in the market, and then once you reach retirement, the amount you have to work with is whatever is in this specific pot of money. This does allow the individual more flexibility on how much they can take, but it does remove any guarantee that this pension will last their entire lives. So what happened? In 2015, the public sector pension scheme was reformed, and this was based on findings from a commission that the coalition government set up in 2010, called the Public Service Pension Commission, and their job was to conduct a fundamental structural review of public service pensions for the 2011 budget. The motivation behind this was that there was a growing concern of the public pension's effect on the government's fiscal debt, and the rise in life expectancy, which is why many felt a reform was needed in the public sector. In a report published in March 2011, the Commission recommended replacing the current final salary scheme with something called a Career Average Revalued Earning Scheme, or CARE for short. This still meant that you still got a retirement salary for life, but instead of it being based on your best salary within your last few years of service, it would be based on your salary for every year of service instead, which is then also adjusted for inflation. So essentially what this meant was that your pension was based on your career average salary instead, hence the name. In addition to this change, they also suggested to have the age at which you can access your workplace pension, which is known as the normal pension age, to follow the state pension age instead. Previously, the schemes had a normal pension age of about 60 to 65, and this would generally depend on which sector you worked for and at which time you joined the scheme as well. So this change meant that the new scheme would follow the state pension age, which would see the normal pension age for these schemes be anywhere between 66 to 68, which are the current achievable state pension ages. In 2013, the government accepted the commission's recommendations, and after further discussion, it was agreed that this would be the basis for the new public sector pension framework for future services starting from 2015. So this meant changing from a defined benefits pension based on a final salary to being based on a career average revalued earnings or care, and for the normal pension age to be linked to the state pension age. There are a few exceptions, and this would be for firefighters, police, and armed forces, which would have their normal pension ages remain at 60. So there was a lot of discussion regarding how this new pension reform should be implemented, but more importantly, how it affects existing members of the old scheme and how it affects those members that are very close to retirement. It was then decided that once the reforms were introduced, which was from the 1st of April 2015, aside from a few exceptions, everyone will be moved on to this 2015 scheme. The exception saw that members who were within 10 years of their normal pension age on the 1st of April 2012 
will continue to remain on the legacy scheme and not move to the 2015 scheme. This was known as transitional protection. Another exception was for members who were more than 10 years, but less than 13.5 or 14 years of their normal pension age. They too can stay on the legacy scheme, but they would eventually transition to the 2015 scheme later down the line. The closest you were to the 10 years mark, the further your transition period was delayed. This was known as tapered protection. And this is basically what happened, but it did cause an issue. This is where the McLeod judgment comes in, also referred to as the McLeod and Sargent judgment as well. After the implementation of the 2015 scheme, judges and firefighters made claims in the employment tribunals that the protection offered to older members constituted direct age discrimination. They argued that the younger members were treated far less favorably than the older members who were given these transitional provisions, which is a fair argument, right? Why were the majority of members forced to migrate immediately in 2015 when other members were given protection to prevent or delay their migration based on their age? In December 2018, the Court of Appeal ruled in favour of McLeod and Sargent, saying that the transitional protections given to certain members were unlawful on the grounds of age discrimination in favour of older members. The government, of course, appealed this decision, but it was later rejected in July 2019. So the government had to accept that there was a difference in treatment between members based on their age. So in July 2020, the government launched a consultation group to find solutions that would remedy this age discrimination. And they eventually proposed one solution, which would give eligible members, so this would be members who got the protection as well as members who did not receive protection, the option to choose which benefits they would like to realize for their retirement for a certain period, known as the remedy period. And this remedy period runs from the 1st of April 2015 to the 31st of March 2022. So in summary, if I was an eligible member for the remedy period, I would be given the option to either claim on the benefits from the legacy scheme or go with the 2015 scheme instead. The choice will be offered to eligible members at the time they retire. So effectively, this means there is no action for members to do until they hit retirement. Once they do reach retirement, members should receive a side-by-side -side comparison for the remedy period that should clearly illustrate the benefits you would get if you went with the legacy scheme benefits versus the benefits you would get from the 2015 scheme. And then it would of course be up to you to choose which options you would like to go for. Obviously you will probably go for the one that makes the most monetary sense. For example, if you earned more benefits in the legacy scheme scenario than the 2015 scheme, then obviously you're probably going to choose the legacy benefits for this remedy period. But Please bear in mind that there might be other factors you may want to consider aside from a monetary point of view. For example, you may want to consider the difference in normal pension ages. So just to be clear, this will be offered to those that were given protection as well as those that didn't get protection when the 2015 scheme was originally introduced. So if you were given protection, you can actively choose to go with the 2015 scheme benefits for the remedy period or stay with your legacy one. And for those that didn't receive the protection, you can choose to go with the legacy benefits for the remedy period or stay in your 2015 scheme benefits, therefore eliminating any unlawful age discrimination. This solution was later accepted and is usually associated to the McLeod judgment. So you may be questioning why the 31st of March 2022 was the chosen end date for the remedy period. And that is because from April 2022, all members will be introduced to the 2015 scheme and all legacy schemes will be closed. Now, when I say closed, you haven't lost them. It's just you're no longer actively contributing to the scheme, but I'll touch more on that a little bit later. But yeah, all legacy pension schemes will be closed and all members will be on the 2015 scheme from April 2022 onwards. There'll be no more protections offered. So in summary, the McLeod judgment refers to the Court of Appeals ruling that the new 2015 public sector pension reforms were unlawful as it was based on members' ages on the 1st of April 2012. And it also refers to the remedy period that the government later proposed to resolve this discrimination. So hopefully that all makes sense. I'm sure there are a few questions you may have, so I'm going to do a quick FAQ round to address some of the questions that I think will be quite common. So the first one being is, when will you choose which benefits you will claim for the remedy period? So the choice will be given to you when you do hit retirement, although this might not happen before October 2023, as there's still some regulatory changes that still need to occur to allow for these choices to happen. If you do retire before then, the government will offer you back payments, if applicable, to make up for this. 
what happens to your legacy pension scheme if you are now in the 2015 scheme. So any legacy pension can still be accessed at retirement. So they are definitely not lost or haven't been transferred over to the 2015 scheme. The benefits of these schemes will still be honored when you reach retirement. And that means you can actually have access to different pensions at different ages because the legacy pension schemes have an earlier normal pension age compared to the 2015 scheme. And finally, when is the earliest you can actually access your pension? So I have mentioned the normal pension ages, but this isn't necessarily the earliest you can access your pension. This is actually known as the minimum pension age, which currently stands at 55. Now this age is the same, irrespective of whether you're claiming on your legacy scheme or the 2015 scheme. But your pension benefits will be penalized if you do take it out before your normal pension age. By how much it's penalized, is based on how far you are from your normal pension age when you do claim. Cool, so that is it for this week's episode. Hopefully it has made clear what the McLeod judgment is and how it affects you. If you do, of course, have any further questions, please do drop me a comment down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. And yeah, as always, if you did find this video incredibly useful, I would appreciate if you smash that like button. That does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and it gets this video shown to more people. And yeah, remember, I release a video every single week. So if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button too. See you later. Bye.